guys, Krista here from Davy and Krista. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make a scrolling screen graphic just like this. So to start, I'm going to download a screen, an image of a screen. This is a stock photo from our friends at Social Squares. Um, they have a lot of really great stock photos and a lot of really great um, screen images that we use all the time for our launch graphics. So after I open up the image in Photoshop, I'm going to zoom in and then I am going to start making a rectangle. So we want it to be about the same proportions as a actual screen. And so if you look at your screen, maybe that you're even working on right now, you'll see that there's a little bit of black edging around the actual screen itself. So we're going to start drawing this. And then I'm probably going to need to hold down the command button and start tweaking the shape a little bit to get it to fit perfectly. Um, especially if the image wasn't shot exactly perfectly on. Once you have the image fit within your screen, I'm going to zoom out and just double check it. And then I'm going to go to my browser. So I'm going to pull up my website. Let's use one of our templates. If you haven't already added this extension, you can go to, let's see, more tools and then extensions, and you can add an extension and you can add this full capture screen image. So I'm just going to click it and it's going to start going and you don't want to interrupt it. But once it's done, you'll have a screenshot of your computer. So I'm just going to hit download. Not all websites photograph equally as well. Um, I've noticed that on show it, if you have something like this, where it's a background image, it might not show up in your screenshot. So I'm going to do a screenshot and show you what happens. Okay, so on this show it will say you can see that all of the background images are missing and this one only came in part of the way. So if I'm screenshotting a show it, show it site, I'll still get this screen capture and then I would download it and then I would come back here and any of these spots that are missed, I would just screenshot them. And so take a little screenshot of just this piece, take a screenshot of this area and then take a screenshot of this area and then you can merge those together in Photoshop and then make it all one single file and that would have the same effect as um, this original one that I did that's a WordPress site that came in perfectly. Once you have your downloaded screenshot, if you open it up in Photoshop, I'm going to go to my desktop and open up this other screenshot that I took and you can actually come into edit and hit copy and that's going to copy this whole thing and then if you come back to your other screenshot that is missing the pieces of it you can go to edit and paste and then you can start pasting in the elements that are missing um, and if I zoom in you can see better where everything should line up and if you move them up and move them around to line them up then you it should have the same effect as a full cohesive screenshot when you have all of your screenshots together, you just want to come over here to this little menu and go to flatten image. So if you do that, then all of your pieces will be together in one image. I'm not going to save that though, because I already have a great um, completed screenshot here. So this is going to be a similar process. I'm going to use the key command, command A to select the entire image and then I'm going to do command copy. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because the screen shows really big and we want to size it down. So I'm going to center it on the image, click this little lock icon and let's try to see if it's 40% if that's a better size. That's still really big. So. I'm going to grab this um, corner and drag it down a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because we can play with it a little bit later. So I'm going to move this over here and then make this just a little bit, a little bit bigger. So more like that. And I'll hit that check mark. Then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come over to my layers palette 
And in between layer one and my rectangle icon, I'm gonna hold down the option button and hover in between the two layers until I see this arrow. Once I see that arrow, I'm gonna click it and that is called a clipping mask and it's gonna clip this image into the rectangle. I have an extra rectangle right here that I'm gonna get rid of because in this next step, we wanna have a minimal amount of layers. So if this um, timeline frame, so if this timeline section isn't already on, you'll wanna come up to window and then timeline. And if you select it, you should see this option right here. We're gonna click this, uh, this um, arrow right here and click on frame animation. And then I'm gonna click create frame animation. So this is our first frame animation and this will be where your scrolling image starts scrolling. Next, I'll come right here and I'll hit this plus sign to duplicate my selection. Then over here in layer one, I'm gonna move this screenshot all the way to the very bottom. So this is what it's gonna end as. So after it's gone through the whole scroll, this is gonna be where you want it to stop scrolling. So I'm gonna have it stop scrolling about here. Then I'm going to click on both of them at the same time using the shift button and I'm gonna click this little um, icon with the circles. I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna set the frames to add to 50. Then I'm gonna select all of the layers except for the first and the last one, and click on this little arrow next to the time, and we want these to be 0.1 second. This one I'm gonna do other, and I'm gonna make this 0.7 seconds. And then down here, I'm gonna do another 0.7 seconds again, so. 0.7 seconds. Once you've done that, if you select the very first frame and hit play, you'll see that it pauses for a second and then it starts to scroll through the, the screenshot and then it'll stop at the last frame. When you're ready to export, I have typically found that there are two file formats that I need in order to share across all platforms. The first is a GIF, um, which you can use in emails, you can use this on Facebook, um, it's just good for general sharing. And then the second is a video file. So an MP4. And I found that those work best on Instagram. I don't believe that you can post a GIF to your Instagram feed. And I don't think that you can share it on Instagram stories either. You need the MP4 file for that. So to export both of those, you'll come up to file and export, and we're going to click render video. And this is going to do the MP4. So you can share it right to your desktop, give it a name. And then these are typically the format side. This, and then this is the typical file format that I do. So Adobe Media Encoder, H2.64, high quality. Um, I have this general size set to be pretty large. You don't want it too large, but you probably want it about at least 2000 pixels wide in order to look crisp in your Instagram feed. I think that Instagram wants at least a 1400 by 1400 square. So if it's bigger than that, like if it's around these settings, then you should be good. Then all you have to do is hit render. That process typically takes a couple of seconds. Then when we're done, if we preview it, it'll look something like this. And oftentimes when you actually upload it to different spaces, you won't see these black bars. Like this would be a great size for Instagram stories. To export something as a GIF, you go to export, save for web, and we're gonna change our settings in here to be GIF. So GIF right there. These settings are probably fine, at least for now. Um, but you can change the image size a little bit if you need to as well. You can adjust the looping options. So I normally set it to be forever so that it continues to play. And then um, if all of these look good to you, you can just hit save. And when it's done, if I play it, you'll see something like this. So I hope this is helpful for... I hope this is helpful for creating great launch graphics. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at davyandkrista.com.